we should be live. Hello, hello, everybody. <clears throat> uh, we're doing something a little bit different today. I thought I was actually gonna be streaming <laughs> Blue Red Delver donation deck list, but that, that's going to be on Wednesday now because today we have to stream for multiple reasons. We have to stream uh, what I have been calling squawks and taxes which I top aided the most recent legacy challenge with and the deck list was quickly taking off on uh, on Twitter and stuff where everyone was seeing it and I got a lot of messages <laughs> about it and stuff. Hang on, I'm trying to update stream or I'm trying to update cardboard live here. There we go. But yeah. Squawks and Taxes, named after the flagship card, Squadron Hawk. The, the squawk himself man this uh this deck was a, actually hilarious and did very well we top like like i said we top aided the legacy challenge with it my only testing with this deck previously was like saturday the day before the the challenge i was like i want to play forza virtue and squadron hawk and then i like built version 1.0 of this list and 4-1 three leagues and then like three two one league and i was like all right you know what fuck it we're gonna play in the legacy challenge <laughs> And then manage to top eight. Look at this shit pile. Indeed. This is uh, not a lot of magic cards you traditionally see in Legacy. This may have been Squadron Hawk's first uh, Legacy Challenge top eight appearance. Um, but yeah, I guess I'll talk about the list a little bit. Also, I, I totally forgot before I was playing the challenge, I did actually enter a league and then like play two more matches in that league before I was like... Yeah, let's play in the challenge today. So, <laughs> I am in the middle of a Legacy League right now with, with this exact list, which is the same one I played in the challenge, so not a big deal. But we're going to play the, the we're gonna finish the other three matches of that, and then, like, I'm going to tweak the list a little bit, and we'll play, like, a couple more matches after that. What's up, Valdareth? How's it going? But, yeah, uh, basically, a lot of the card... I guess I should talk about some of the card choices, since some a lot of people have been asking me about them before I uh, get into, like, the... the gameplay and stuff so obviously it took a lot of like normal death and taxes cards mana base is almost exactly the same uh valdareth thanks for the follow appreciate it also i didn't get a noise i don't know why do you guys hear the notification sound my my volume might just be turned low oh no i have desktop value turn wait no it's not desktop audio it's alerts whatever anyway so mana base is like obviously very death and taxes as we're playing ports wasteland caracas sometimes i played ancient doom in here i thought about playing ancient doom in this version but like yeah it could be good for like casting force of virtues and stuff and obviously always decent with your equipment but i decided against it but it could it could maybe be right honestly um the other thing is i was playing th this was a uh, a little bit of a contested topic playing giver runes versus playing mother of runes and i Cannot and will not defend playing Giver of Runes because I'm not confident <laughs> that um, this is the actual like this is actually the choice that you should be you should be playing this card. I play I added Giver of Runes on a whim. One of, one of my friends was like, "Hey, maybe you should try Giver of Runes as a mom." And I was like, "All right, yeah, deal." <laughs> and I tried Giver, and I was I mean it, it was about Mother of Runes. Most of the like the the matches that I played with it. When the next Everyday Eternal podcast comes out later this week, you should listen. I don't know what I'm going to talk about your But, yeah. Uh, I mean, it seemed okay. Like, obviously, there are definitely spots where it's going to be worse than Mom, but none of them really came up. And um, being a 1-2, like, it's not just, like, strictly worse Mother of Runes, right? It doesn't die to Ren and Six, especially on the draw. It doesn't die to Plague Engineer. Um, Protection from Colorless can come up, protecting your stuff from, like, a... Uh, a GTA ping or blocking like a thought Nazi or whatever. Uh, so why'd you keep this a secret? I would mostly wanted the the uh, the meme factor. Honestly, I think the downside is super minimal has a lot of upsides. Yeah, I was actually I was more impressed by it than I thought I would be. Like a lot of the times, I just played it and then it died, and then was like, okay, this was a mother of runes. But obviously, the downsides are when you play it and then it doesn't die, and then like later they kill it. Whereas mom would be like blanking their bolt forever. They can draw a bolt, kill it. Draw another bolt kill your thali or whatever, rather than two for one themselves. They can they can eventually get past a giver of runes. 
But, I mean, that's kind of why I wanted to, one of the reasons I was going to play is because I wanted to try, we were already trying so many nonsense things. Want to add another one to the pile. Um, DM Weisenberg, thanks for the tier one sub. I appreciate it. Um, uh, it's basically mom as long as it isn't in play alone. Yeah, when it's in play alone, it's definitely awkward when you, can, you can't, like, block and tap itself to protect against the thing. It's also <laughs> one thing that, um, did come up during the, during the, uh, the challenge. I played against Stoneblade in round two, and I was on the draw in game two, and my opponent goes, like, land, ponder, or whatever. I go, land, giver of runes. My opponent goes, land, go, holding up, and then just have, like, Plains Island. And I go... Play my Rashad and Port. Look at my hand of like all three drops. I was like, all right. I, I mean, I'm not going to play a two drop here, so I don't need to protect anything. So why not just attack? It's not Mother of Runes. It can't protect itself. So I attack, and then my opponent flashes in Containment Priest and just crushes me. <laughs> I mean, it didn't actually crush me. I still won the game, but like, it felt really bad. So Mother of Runes does have the upside of you don't, you aren't bad with it and attack into open mana because you just never attack with it. But that's not like an actual, obviously not a real thing. Fipples, thanks for the Twitch Prime sub. Appreciate the support. Enjoy your Thalia emotes. So anyway, um, that's my Giver of Runes thing. I don't endorse Giver of Runes yet. It's honestly still like testing for me. I played it in two matches of this league so far, and then also in the challenge. Um, <clears throat> the other things are we're playing the uh, Squadron Hawk and Force of Virtue package. I put these. Uh, Packages air quotes because I don't really think these cards are very playable without the other one. Squadron Hawk is a pile of one ones, one one flyers, right? It's like not, it's not anything super powerful, but it is something that DNT does lack a lot. That was actually like just had a lot of upside in a lot of the games that I played uh, yesterday in the challenge, which was just card advantage. You, even when you're drawing, like, you're Ancestral Recalling 1-1 one, one Flyers, but it's still an Ancestral Recall. A lot of my Squadron Hawks got plowed or, or pushed or bolted and stuff, and you're just gaining a bunch of card advantage because you make a bunch of things your opponent has to deal with. Especially when you're putting equipment on them or you just have Force of Virtue in play and they're 2-2s. Two like, it does let you stack up a bunch of threats. Especially with uh, Aether Vial, you just leave your Vial on 2 all the time and you can deploy a, a lot of, uh, a lot of Squadron Hawks very quickly. This is the Lava Spike better than Bolt Argument? You can't make a mistake with Lava Spike. Exactly, pretty much. You can't make a mistake with Mom because you just leave it untapped all the time to protect itself. And then Force, force of Virtue is a card that, like, kind of got dunked on for being, like, the worst, for, I guess second worst Force because the Red Force is horrible, but... Um, force of Virtue kind of got memed on because it's not super playable or anything. And I think in, like, traditional Taxes shells, this card, like, is not good at all. It's very clunky and card disadvantage and doesn't really help a lot of the things that you're having problems with in the ways that you want it to but with in tandem with squadron hawk suddenly your ancestral recall for one one flyers turns to into uh divination for two two flyers i guess or ancestral for two 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 flyers and a an anthem like it just you you draw three cards with squadron hawk and then you pitch one to fourth virtue you still up a bunch of cards and now you just have like a huge board state to, and to go along with that i i went tripled up on hallowed spirit keeper my originalist had four but my originalist also wasn't playing recruiter of the guard so i shaved a spirit keeper and a couple of other cards and i was testing out the recruiter package i don't even know if like the recruiter package is something this deck wants or needs still but i, I kind of wanted it to shore up the combo matchups a little bit but yeah we're playing a bunch of spirit keepers and squadron hawks to try to force a virtue dunk on my opponents and the sideboard is relatively stocked death and tag and stuff we're playing gideon's I wanted to give, give Gideon his his uh, time time in the spotlight again. I've hated on Gideon for a long time. I think it's a lot worse than Cataclysm. But like, if any deck's going to take advantage of Gideon and his Anthem, it's going to be this deck, right? But so far, Gideon also still hasn't been very impressive. Like, I might still just want to be playing Cataclysms. But other than that, we're playing like pretty stock stuff. I'm not playing Chalices. I am just like playing Canonists and stuff. I think there's something to be said for playing more creatures when you're playing a bunch of Force of Virtues in your deck. And, like, Cannonist plus Force of Virtue means your uh, Cannonist can't get massacred from uh, from Storm or anything. Which is pretty powerful. <clears throat> uh, other thing to note, we're not playing Batter Skull. We're only playing three Stoneforge Mystics and just the two equipment here. So I kind of wanted a third equipment in the sideboard. So we're playing Light and Shadow. I'm not even sure what this if this sword should be something else. Truth and Justice. Maybe I should still be playing Batter Skull. I'm not sure. 
But I ended up cutting the Batter's Skull because I didn't think it was super powerful in a lot of the matchups that I was concerned about. Mainly the, the Batter's Skull matchup is just Delver, right? And I didn't think this deck had a terrible Delver matchup. Although apparently it does, because I keep losing to Delver. Which is a problem that I need to address with this deck. Other than that, uh, that's pretty much this, this deck list in a nutshell. Yeah, no one, no one noticed the Zero Batter Skull. Probably because I think in the picture it's like this. So, like, everyone just assumes there's, like, a batter squall off to the side. Because it's, like, the only five drop. But, yeah, we're only playing three stone, four, just no batter skull. But I'm not, again, this is the fifth league I've played with this deck, I guess. And there are a lot of, there's a lot of uh, tweaking and testing to be done. But the shell was just so much more powerful than I had actually envisioned it would be. That I am happy to, to tweak it more. I thought it was just going to be, like, a terrible meme. And I was like, alright, whatever. On to the next thing, but... It did a lot of did a lot of powerful things. <laughs> Army of Thalia, thanks for the 13 month resub. The Squawks Mason, what do they mean? Oh man. But this this deck list was so fun. Squadron Hawk was just tremendously powerful the whole league. It was very impressive. Like I blocked a bunch of Arclight Phoenixes. I just like played a bunch of 1-1s and like anthemed them against like Stoneblade and stuff. Obviously not strong in your combo matchups, and that is uh, a weakness of this deck, is that I cut a lot of the combo cards, <clears throat> Phyrexian Revoker and like some of the Recruiter Package, stuff like that, uh, to play a bunch of Anthems and Squadron Hawks, which is not really what you want to be doing against like Storm and Sneak and Show. But that's, I tried to shore that up a little bit in the sideboard, with like, that's why I'm playing two Prelates, two Ather Swarm Cannon and stuff like that, to try to shore up the combo matchups a little bit. All right. Ah, perfect. The perfect hand. <laughs> the perfect hand to start our league. <laughs> All of our meme cards. Also, it's just such a good curve. We're just going like, to die to Emrakul or Tendrils of Agony, but... I didn't register four Squadron Hawks and four Force of Virtues to not keep this hand. Exile Hawk. That does not sound powerful. I guess I shouldn't have. Uh, there's probably like no two damage spell they were gonna cast there. No real reason to like. Also, they can't force on. I can't force on my turn. Obviously, hey, gonna plow that. Oh, we can plow that and play our giver. Have you been screwed by Cabal Therapy when you had three Squadron Hawks in your hand? Um, when I'm playing this Cabal Therapy deck, I'll, I'll tutor the Squadron Hawks one at a time. But I have not gotten sniped out of, like, not knowing they're a Therapy deck, just getting three Hawks and just getting wrecked. That hasn't happened quite yet. Alright, please no Forcerino. Nice. I think I'm happy playing this Gift for Ruins into the days. Oh no, my Giver of Runes. I mean, the, if you look, these both these Giver of Runes were just Mother of Runes with one extra toughness. Both times. There are a lot of instances where it just doesn't matter. Huh. I need to play this Squawk so I can get this Force down. Thalia plus Force is really strong, though. I think I just want to wanna Squawk it up. And probably Wasteland my I could also just Thalia Wasteland my opponent. My opponent missed their land drop. Pretty strong. I just like squawk next turn. Notice a small nombo with all the enforce. Yeah, it's not like it's not the worst thing in the world, but it's definitely there. It does mm -hmm. exist. When you're like on the draw and you play your turn two Thalia and then they turn three Ren and Six, you can't protect it with a force. I think I do just want to wasteland my opponent here. Sure. Alright, well, 
recall. It's time for ancestral recall. My opponent has two cards in hand. I guess I should have uh, Wasteland this first since that already played their own days because they take them off their island. No! Forcible pitching period, eh? How are we going to win? Well, they have no cards in hand and only a Wasteland, so I feel okay. Uh, do I even play this Caracas? No, because we want if we draw a three drop. Opponent fears the squawk. Oh, that's pretty good. I don't even know if I want to plow this. We found like a land arcanist. I think I can just sit here and take one a turn. Yeah. I think I'm much more likely to find something first. Oh, sure, Force Pitch Days deal. Fuck. I should have, oh yeah, I should have done that after. I should have done, either done that on my turn or after damage, because Force just lets them deal an extra damage. Can we draw, like, a creature, please? Well, that is a creature. They have, like, one card in hand and actually can't even daze, so. Yeah, yeah, we did it. Man, I'm really sad the squadron hawk got forced there, because that was going to be so good. All right. Um, Blue-red, just blue-red Delver, huh? Haven't played against this matchup in a while. Bonus <laughs> says couldn't beat the Hawks. Spirit Keeper plus Hog is nasty. Yeah, it just like feeds a bunch of uh, feeds a bunch of cards in your graveyard for the Spirit Keeper. Like there are a bunch of weird hidden synergies in this deck. It's the last card I'm cutting. Um, all these cards are pretty good. I think I'd probably cut like a Force. What does Force do for this matchup? My name is like Chick Fil I refuse to play four mana white white cards. The real play is having more than one Hawks, they always force it. Oh, yeah. The the one thing about this deck, it always sucks when you keep a hand that has a uh, Squadron Hawk and then you draw another Squadron Hawk right before you play it. It's the worst feeling in the world. <laughs> what does Force of Virtue do in this matchup? Uh, they don't really, they don't have a lot of pingers. They'll have, like, uh, some sort of, like, electric, Electricery or Blazing Volley. I can probably go down to one force of virtue. I don't really see anything else I'd really actively want to cut. Eh, maybe a spirit keeper, actually. Force of virtue is, like, definitely not the worst thing in the world. Let's your stuff brawl really well. Let's go down a spirit keeper. Spicy. Yeah, we top aided the challenge with this list, Capons. My stepmom over mom. Uh, it's something that I was trying out. I'm not sure if it's better but it's definitely not, not actively that much worse apparently my opponent bought 40 full squadron hawks back when they got released Here to watch you kill someone with a 3-2 giver. 10 card hand sneak. Yeah, this hand's like this hand's great. Snap, keep this hand. The squawk's too strong. Force isn't that bad and other hilarious jokes to tell your friends. Hey, this you you play two bad cards to make them both not bad, right? That's how it works.
Go, give her runes. Uh, give her runes gonna get bolted, and for the third time today, oh, it's still alive. All right. I was gonna say for the third time today, it'll just be mother of runes, but maybe it gets to live, or maybe they just have like a chain lightning for it. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't get yeah exactly. Doesn't get run six or plague engineered are the big the big draws to having it. Um, I think I'll play Thalia here. Honestly, like the squawk seems more important with the sand. <laughs> also, like. Yeah, that's pretty much my only reason. Also, probably is just always good, good to get down early. Thali is the test spell. <laughs> I don't know what's your name. Time for the, the call. Oh no, we're just drawing no white sources. We can't judge what this true name. to take to the skies. <laughs> Not sure which art to get. I got the 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 buy a box promo or whatever with FNM promo, but it's obviously because I love promos, so we are taken to the skies. Hopefully we draw four so my opponent like doesn't have electricery or something. Cause we are about to get wrecked by electricery. Oh no, my cat's here. Yes, the second planes. Now we can play two squawks. I wonder if Max is with like not council judgment this turn. Like walk into a daze pretty hard. Opponent's four cards in hand. Jim Brewers Bro, thanks for the follow. I appreciate it. My cat has joined the party. You are not a squadron hawk, but you'll have to do. Yeah, we're gonna punch. Let's see what my opponent does here. How many hawks am I supposed to play before it's greedy? Maybe I'm supposed to like hawk plus port this turn? I don't want to get, like, absolutely wrecked by an electricery or something. Hawk, yeah, I kind of like Hawk plus Port. If they have, like, Static Caster, that kind of sucks. Static Caster is just a huge bummer. <laughs> no. No. I'm not going to play around it, though. No. Oh, no! Oh, thank God. Delay me. Wow, bolting my face. Tell me how it is, huh? Not bolting the squawks or my Thalia. Never imagined a world where Hawk plus support and is great would be in the same sentence. Hey, you never know. World's full of surprises all the time. Hawk's giving him the business. Opponent still just hasn't done anything. A little scared about just firing off this council's judgment. We get to play around days now, at least. So we just like get got by force, but we might also be like winning the race depending on how many bolts my opponent has. Playing a Mist Veil Planes. <laughs> I'm not playing a Mist Veil Planes. I would prefer playing like Fetches and a Tap Land in my deck. Which I was not super keen on, but may be testing at some point. But like, if you're, we're playing Fetches in the format where like one of my best matchups is them, them playing like Stifles and stuff and taking a bunch of extra damage, is not something I'm keen on. And Mist Veil Planes Squadron Rock Synergy is not very strong, except for like exactly in the super grindy control matchups where uh, they just play Ren and Six Wasteland anyway. Let's get this council's judgment countered. Yeah, and ETB tap is a is a pretty big cost. Bo show. Maybe 
being spell pierced, vapor snag my Thalia in response, and then force maybe. They just want to like use their mana more efficiently. Basically, they're well now, I guess. It's gonna put me to seven. It's getting a little dicey with bolts. I might die here. We're putting them to eight. We're going to seven. Uh oh. Uh oh. We're going to five. Now it might just be like dead. Assuming they found a bolt in two brainstorms, we're probably just dead. So we draw like second council judgment right here. Nope. Oh, don't play around cards you can't beat. I mean, do I win if I play Thalia? I don't think I win regardless, right? I'm gonna need a top deck something still. So we'll just play Athalia. Squawk Squawk better than Wisp. Wisp adds more power. What's my out here? Besides drawing removal. Um, force. Force is an out. That's true. Does for, is for, so force is more damage with. It's four damage with either, right? I'll have eight damage in the air regardless. Drawing like swords off is literally lethal too. Swords also four damage. Sword, stone forge. I don't think any of my decisions really matter, so we'll play the more mana intensive line, I guess. Wisp for lethal. Yeah, like. I guess. One, two. Mm. I think I have to block the. I mean, I definitely have to block the Swiss for this turn too, so. Can you guys hear my girlfriend's listening to something in the other room? I think I might need to have that turned down. Assuming I live through this turn, I guess. Uh, Squadron Hawk get coming off of Vile's stronger. Bolt my face. All right. I appreciate my opponent just telling me like it is. I'm not fucking around with attacking with your name first. Um, I think we're just gonna run it back. We'll run it back though. I need to tell her to turn that down. Jeans and August bold. Oh, man, I'm indoors. I usually change out of my jeans at home once I get home, but today's been busy. I've been in and around. Um, yeah, we'll just resubmit here. One thing I have been losing to the most, I guess that hasn't really changed with Death and Taxes, I've just been like, keep dying to true name. That's not really a super fixable problem. I can just like play three councils judgment again. Maybe I want like sword of whatever it is. Blue white sword instead of the black white sword. All this stuff is castable, sure. Sword of truth and justice. Maybe I can play that over the light and shadow. You wanna come on, kitty? Hello. Come on. Oh. Yeah, one thing this this current iteration of the deck list does lack is just like a lot of spot removal. I I assumed that the Delver matchup was uh was actually okay, but I think the Delver matchup does need a little bit of shoring up with this list. Love to play first. All right, snap keep. Sam's insane. Just stop one of these bullshit decks because I have to play 
And with four lands, please and say. <laughs> Play the more of the lands. So Force of Virtue is the Anthem effect? Yeah, Force of Virtue is four mana Anthem, or you can cast it on your opponent's turn by pitching a white card for free. And also, thanks for the congrats. Appreciated. A Delver. Oh, the classic turn two vile. We'll just play Thalia here. I think it's, again, like... If it doesn't get dazed, obviously it's great. If it does get dazed, I think these other two cards are more both more important. Oh, no flip. Nice. Ooh, that's not the strongest mana base I've ever seen. I'm just with a wasteland this wasteland just to prevent like true name. I'll play the wasteland first to play around like a, a drawn day or something. I'll probably just Stoneforge Mystic for Sword of Fire Nice. Although if I if I just play another plane so that gets me to turn four sword or yeah, just gets me to sword connection. I probably don't care if they play true name. If they cast true name, we just connect with the sword the following turn and just crush them, right? So I probably just want to like play on my other planes to not get wastelanded here. If they like force a will, yeah, we still have the, the squad. GT and Hawk will be your name. Yeah, I'm probably getting sword, but yes. If they just have like straight up force, then we still have the squad. Squawks coming in hot. Can, can you can you do that? Please stop getting your gross drooly face all over me. Just the test. Every every spell is the test spell for Squawk. Let's be real. <laughs> you gotta make sure your Squawk resolves. Although next turn we'll just like draw Squad or knock, and I'll look like a fool for not not playing him as soon as possible. Because obviously you do want to run it out before you draw your second one. Otherwise you just like miss a card. Kitty is hyped up for the bird stream. Do you see? Do you see the bird? Huh? Do, do, do you see it? Do, do, do you see it? She doesn't see it. <laughs> hey, we did it. The squawk too powerful. It's okay if you're doing it on your shoulder. Granting me the blessing of the White Weenie's decks. And the good old three hawker. What? I don't think there's a world in which you would register three squawker hawks in your deck, or at least there shouldn't be. Please fight for this league. We've 4 one three leagues prior to this, so I'll try. On Saturday, I went 4-1-4-1, 4-1, 3-2. And then on Sunday, I played the first two matches of this league. And then played, decided to play in the challenge on a whim. Okay, get off me, please. Pretty sure Hawk is broken. Hawk is the new legacy staple. Three Hawk was the young Harrison was raised on before he played Comp Magic. Oh, that's that's really funny. <laughs> Classic casual magic player things. This card tutors every single other card in your deck with the same name, is it? We probably shouldn't play the, the max number of this. What do you want? Why are you coming back here? You just left. Why are you coming back? Why are you being such such a little pest, huh? You're always a pest. Every time I try to stream here, it's like, oh, hey, hey, let me hang out. Let me hang out right now. Rub my face in your face. Why aren't we, why aren't we hanging out? Let's hang out. I don't even know you can only have four of a card in your deck back in those days. We all do dumb shit when we're, we're, we're bad. I started in Gate Crash and, like, traded all my shock lands for, like, Prime Speaker Zaganas and shit. What am I going to do with this stomping ground? I love Simic. Eh, that's probably a keep. Less powerful of a keep than our previous hands have been. <laughs> you talking shit about Prime Speaker Zagana? 
Sorry, sorry, guy. I liked Prime Speaker Zagana too. That's why I traded for it. I liked Simic. I was like, I'm, I'm definitely about to trade for this Prime Speaker Zagana with the stomping ground. What the fuck am I supposed to do with this land? Do you mind, huh? Do you mind? No, nope, apparently don't mind. No. <laughs> Have you seen normal DD? Yeah, normal DD doesn't look that much better than squad or not DNT, to be fair. Exclusively unplayable magic cards. <laughs> Alright, chat poll. Which one's better? Squadron Hawk or Hero of Bladehold? <laughs> which which magic card is better? So the start is a meme? Kind of. Oh, is this the four color miracles deck? Why would you sorcery speed it's lonely sandbar cycle? Can you not for like five seconds, please? Just just sit there. Nope. So we'll just give a sword fire nice. Actually, when is the giveaway happening? Are we at 750? I know we're close. Consider tweeting about it, but I've been tweeting a bunch today anyway. Let me uh, refresh my follows here. We're at 748. Two more followers, and we'll be giving away two full rest in pieces. Not on this stream, but I will announce probably the Friday stream, I guess. Assuming we hit it. AK Yanny, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. That should be 749 now. Oh, hang on. We're just playing Lonely Sandbar and like Four Color Control, not Miracles. We're just like the check pile. So wait till next week and next chance. It's Martyr of Souls to the sideboard to Martyr of Sands to the sideboard to be Delver. Now we're talking. All right, well, this uh, double source plus share's hand is not super good. I wonder if I'm supposed to just run out of Spirit Keeper for, like, two spirits. Probably not. I think I'm happy playing on another Stoneforge Mystic. And Lawyer Dorset, thanks for the follow. Appreciate the support. That means now that we're at 750 followers... I'll, I'll announce it on Twitter as well, but on the Friday stream, I suppose. Don't quote me on that. Look to, look look on Twitter for the official thing, but I'm pretty sure, I'm like 80% sure it'll be the Friday stream. We're giving away two RTR foil rest in pieces. Thank everybody for your support. Also, like, it's not just a hard cutoff at 750. If people follow after that, then you're still good. Here we unfollowing. Rude. Probably just going to plow this now. They're not getting any better, and we kind of want to play Spirit Keeper and not trade with it. You get an extra ticket if you say here a play ball is playable in the chat. You get an extra ticket if you follow me on Twitter, too, but you don't get an extra ticket for a hero of Blade Hold related shenanigans. So, Ice Nine, thanks for the one bit. Kind of want Wastelands Underground C, if I'm being honest. Please, no force. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't. Nope, no force of will. You don't have it. Maybe they're just reading it and then deciding that they can't beat it. Saw army had to give a bit. Fair. Oh, 
what you got, opponent? Yeah, definitely a reader moment there, just reading Hell's Spirit Keeper. Oh, aggressive. I wonder if I'm supposed to discard this Giver of Runes to get another Spirit. How does the bit work? Bits are basically like pennies. They're just like a form of like Twitch donation currency. I can also discard, discard this Plow because it's bad. And just like the Giver of Runes is probably better than a 1 1 Spirit. I'm already getting 3. Probably a Plague Engineer in my future, which sucks. Uh, we could discard like GT. There's a lot of options to discard here. Kind of in for like Giver plus Port next turn. So, like the Port, the Black Source or something, or maybe the Volk. Giver's better against the coming Engineer, yeah. I'm getting wrecked by uh, Engineer. Yeah, if I discard the, yeah, the, the Temptation to discard Giver was just getting more Spirits right now. I think I just get like ranched badly by Spirit, by Engineer I can't beat it anyway. So let's discard the GT, I think. I want to be able to like Plow and Engineer try to rebuild. God dang it, this cat. Ugh. Why is she such a pest? Um, let's punch. I don't think I just want to like, double port. Probably not. Double port's better against uh, land engineer. Yeah, force of virtue top deck would be hot. I do just want to play Giver, though. Not the port, but Black Source, just in case. They're probably not going to color screw them off of Plague Engineer, but you never know. Let's take place of Tropical Island and shit. Nope. Please no Engineer me. But we could, like, if they Engineer, we at least could, like, plow, draw, rip a land, and sword them. Oh, nice. Alright, we'll discard the plow. Such a demon. Rip a land. Deal. Don't do it. Don't you do it. Yeah, don't. But it has burned two KQ hands. I mean, they could obviously just have, like, land Snapcaster Mage or something, but we could at least, like, draw cards and hit them for a billion. And next turn, we just, like, waste port port them. Try to murder them with the rest of these spirits. Don't! Just stop! I'm trying to stream! <laughs> Decay the sword? Sure. Doesn't get you out of the current hole. Bolt of Spirit, all right. What color do I take them off of? Oh my god. Uh. Play land. Um, probably just put them down to a swamp, right? But what color do I want to take them off of permanently? Red or green? My guess is waste red. Yeah, green's not instant speed stuff, so we can probably port the green. I can agree with that assessment. Let's hope these two spirits can limp me across the finish line here. 
Oh no, I should have ported the to the two snowlands. What a fool I was. Alright, time to top deck something good. That's not something good. Where do these spirits come from anyway? Uh Hallowed Spirit Keeper. I think oh, you guys can't read my graveyard cards whenever I blow them up like that. <laughs> Punch. I'll leave the planes in my hand in case of like snap K command. So porting this island actually cuts them off of like more colors. So they astrolabe, I think. They'd have to use the astrolabe for like blue and then they only have this. We have some squadron hawks to draw. Are they gonna K command me and draw stuff or an upkeep here? I would love to discard a card instead of either losing this vial or spirit. I would love to stop drawing planes. We'll play these lands out in case we draw squadron hawk. Missing. They're almost dead. Come on, spirits, limp across the finish line. We have a lot of good draws, our deck. Squadron Hawk, Spirit Keeper, Recruiter of the Guard. Even like Thalia. Oh yeah, Force of Virtue would be nuts. Bono keeps like pausing in my upkeep here. Do they have something or are they just like doing other things? Fuck. Can we stop drawing every <laughs> plow in our deck? We have so many good top decks. Can we just find a squadron hawk, please? Alright, they're at one. We've turned off their fetch lands. And like several of their outs. They need to kill both my spirits now, so they need like Plague Engineer. I guess I shouldn't have six because of that. Actually, do I want to plow this? I might not want to plow this. I have enough mana where I don't need to plow this right now, and like maybe getting them up to three life is relevant. I'm gonna leave the vial on two. We can cast a three. And ensuring that we resolve the squawk is important. Ensuring that we don't draw every land, vial, and source of pleasure in our deck is also pretty important. Now we're just getting, getting chased. Yeah. Fate seal me, huh? We have a lot of hits. They've like bottom every creature basically. I wonder if I want to take the vial up to three now. They only have two cards in hand. So taking the vial up to three means that like Hallowed Spirit Keeper is much better because they can't just like Jace bounce it or something. Versus Squadron Hawk, we can play multiples of.
I think we might still have more twos in the deck, though. We have drawn two of our Stoneforge Mystics, but we still have four Thalias, four Squawks versus... Yeah, we have more twos in the deck. Damn it. Oh, wait. All right. Do they have Force of Will? Chat, do they have Force Blue... Oh, they can't have Force Blue Card. They're one life. Oh, fuck yeah. We're going to recruit for Squawks. We going in... Ah, motherfucker. Kaka. the bounce replay play. If they do that, we still have the plow. And also they didn't do that, so. Yeah, Recruiter is the honorary fifth hawk. Honestly, Recruiter for Squadron Hawk was like one of the reasons I wanted to fit a Recruiter package in this deck. It's just like you just recruit Squadron Hawk and then you make a bunch of Squadron Hawks. Can't lose. No shuffle. Do they got something to beat the Squawks? Second Plague Engineer? We could not beat that, but we could plow it and then oh and then then they can do it if they see the jace line might get dangerous death and taxes for the win thanks for the raid appreciate it hope your stream went well we are currently doing some squawking nice the squawks have won opponent's hand was brainstorm bolt in our set can't beat the squawks Oh, nine with mono black. Oof. Play some Squadron Hawks. Squadron Hawk is the key. Is the key. I cracked the legacy code. Just play Squadron Hawk. Nice hand. <laughs> what was it doing against Hawks? Has the Kickman deck matchup been improved for regular DT? That was actually the reason I wanted to play Squadron Hawks initially. I was trying to work out a way to fight the uh, this matchup specifically, like the four color. Uh, pile matchups and the combination of Squadron Hawk plus Force of Virtue seems pretty powerful in those matchups. I bought a playset of FNM Hawks. Yeah, I, I ordered a playset of FNM Hawks and Foil Forces <laughs> after I top ate it. I was like, alright, I'm sold. I'll play this deck at some point. Alright, what are we cutting? Probably just like. I wonder if we're supposed to like just cut flicker wisps. I remember a while ago you said you sucked at brewing. <laughs> I I don't fashion myself a brewer at all, but this list worked. I I don't know what happened. The stars aligned. I got so many pictures of people that bought went and bought uh, squadron hawks today. <laughs> so many people kept sending them to me. It was very good. So we can cut all those. We can probably actually cut the GT in this matchup since we're only on three Mystics. Two equipment. GT is not super powerful. Um, kind of like one Giver, maybe. Giver is probably pretty, pretty weak in the infinite spot removal matchup. Is there anything else that's worse? I could maybe cut a Flicker Wisp instead. Okay, you're back again for the fifth time. you on twitter and here just because of this list here oh man man i love it <laughs> thank you respectfully weird appreciate the follow remember your rpt with an eternal scourge that was i also did steal that the eternal scourge tech i saw from someone else online i forget i saw like a deck list with it or something squadron hawk is 
the brainchild of me and my close friends <laughs> for sure knitted soup thanks for the follow as well appreciate it and yo sphinx okay wow well, seriously okay yes the sphinx and a normal cat but she rarely appears on stream the sphinx is a lot more cuddly to the point where it's annoying a lot of the time sharp. Let me, let me trim these claws. Let me see. Uh, okay, they're not that sharp. Oh, man. Snap off. Man, This is these are the hands that I have signed up. Just and... Just, I, I don't know. Just something. Just, just another. I figured it out. Just another, except with no vowels. Just another guy. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Out of interest, why give reverence over mom? Um, this is a question I've been answering a lot today, but uh, I should actually like keep actually play. But um, I, I just wanted to try it out. There's a lot of times where give reverence actually isn't that like actively worse than mom or anything. There are some spots where it's actually better, especially in like Plague Engineer Run in Six Meta, which is kind of what I was trying to beat with this list. So I gave it a shot. I'm I'm still giving it a shot. I don't know if it's better. I've only been playing it for like one league and the challenge, but. <clears throat> not uh not 100 on like if it's the the correct call or anything uh, and is the tim thanks for the follow as well appreciate it oh god cat's falling please stop stabbing me written six no decay sure ripped it 750 yeah uh so we're not doing the the giveaway like right as soon as we hit 750 followers it'll be on the friday stream I'm pretty sure. I'll announce it on Twitter to as a concrete thing, but I don't want to be like, okay, as soon as we hit it, we'll just immediately do the giveaway, because, you know, some people want to tune in for that stuff. Uh, God, we're going to play Thaw and get Rend. It's going to be very sad. If we play Squadron Hawk and we get Rend, then we just fucking get him. Maybe I'm actually supposed to play, some, play the Squawk here. When do you stream on Friday? Uh, about five o'clock. I'll put. I'll have. I'll have details in the tweet once I tweet it out. Like I might be like busy this Friday. And I'll have to do it like next Monday. But Did we actually squawk here. Honestly, Thalia is like kind of a liability. Kaka. Well, I get two squawks. Otherwise, we can move to discard. Come on, Ren and Six me. Ren and Six me. Do it. Do it, punk. You won't. Ren and Six me, and then also don't have Force of Will, because then that would be rude. This deck is sick. Squatter Hawk is actually like this, like crazy power like i don't want to say crazy powerful card but like that's how it's felt like it's just felt very good in a lot of matchups <laughs> all right this could still be a run in six so it'd even be a tapped out run in six oh, are they passing boo coward your kitty cat seems very nice also she is she loves licking my face that's what I just play the Force of Virtue anyway. Like, I don't think I'm supposed to be, like, gunning for the sick blowouts. More that I just want to, like, deal my opponent damage. Is Arnold Pure not better than Force of Virtue? Uh, Force of Virtue is zero mana, which is pretty big. Also, you can kind of recoup the card disadvantage in a lot of cases by, like, countering a spell like a Renin Six or, or something. Also, it's unabrupt decayable, which is big. I think I want to get this down, especially because I might cast Thalia next turn. Got those claws. No, we drew the other squawk. Fuck. <laughs> Damn it. We got got. Crazy powerful. In the, yeah, crazy powerful in the format where people are like making Grizzlebrand on turn one and like casting Tendrils of Agony and Jace the Mind Sculptor and shit. We're playing one ones for two. Man, drawing, <laughs> drawing the fourth squawk was like the actual worst. We got fucking got. 
and it's gonna be a bolt for Athalia. She can't push for Athalia. Why did you search all four? Because uh, we would have eight, would have had eight cards in hand, and then we would have had to move and discard. I just been the last one. Why do I want to be the last one? I want to draw the last one. It's like a one in forty nine chance that we draw the other squawk, right? I'd much rather draw it than just like put it in the graveyard for no reason. Or not draw it. I would much rather tutor it up with another squadron hawk eventually than put it in the graveyard for no reason. Unless I was like actively working towards Hallowed Spirit Keeper or something. Why did I put it Ponder Shuffle and then miss? Unfortunately, we're also missing. But we have squadron hawks to play. I'd love to cast, like, a Gideon in a couple turns, though. Go, Squadron Hawks. Why would you brainstorm a here? Wouldn't you, like, want to... I guess... Oh, wait. No. Why would you bring... Yeah, why would you brainstorm here? You either don't brainstorm on your turn because you want to make sure that you, like... If you, you need to brainstorm lock yourself, right? So you wait another turn. Or you brainstorm... Then to find their land drop. Bring your response to squadron drop doesn't really make any sense. Oh no, my squawk. You got him good. Got him, coach. People don't know how to cast a brainstorm. Yeah, that's true. I don't know how to cast brainstorm. Brainstorm's a hard card to cast. What is this image? What is. What the hell is this? What is this from Mario? What have you done? It looks amazing. This was actually something that was on my short list of things to test. Also, isn't Crusade just like worse than Honor of the Pure? Unless you're playing both, which seems sketch. But Squadron Hawk Stompy was something that was on my short list of things that I wanted to try. I don't think I want to wasteland. I don't want. I don't think I want to cast Sword of Light and Shadow either. If everyone's Cold Guns Command, we just get like so savagely wrecked. Oh, you are playing both Crusade and out of the pier. Okay, well, I guess that's valid. <laughs> humility is hot. Oh, I wonder if you could play Humility and Squadron Hawk Stompy. Play Scars. I don't even know what Scars the Veteran does. A Celestial Crusader, the 4 CMC split second. So yeah, anyway, I don't think I want to cast Sword of Light and Shadow here, because it's so bad if my opponent has K-Command. I think I just want to keep adding to the board. And I don't want to I can't use this Wasteland, because we want to cast our Council's Judgment and Gideon. So let's just keep squawking it up. Although my opponent has been, like, missing land drops. My opponent pondered, didn't shuffle, and hit a land drop this time. I think I want to play my Gideon, though. My opponent's, like, been pretty light on stuff to do. Also, if they, like, find a big Planeswalker or something, Capsule Judgment's pretty important. Can you please stop stabbing me with your horrible claws, cat? Just sit there. Just You can you can sit here. You can even rub your face on my face. That's fine. These are all fine. Yeah, these are, like, the weirdest brainstorms. <laughs> I hope this is just snap lightning bolt your squadron, Hawk. So it's probably like Snap Ponder or something. Oh wow, it's Snap Lightning Bolt your Squadron Hawk. <laughs> Deal. Not even like push your Squadron Hawk. Man, one for wanting my Grixis opponent to death is just the best thing in the world. Do I attack with my Squawk here? I'm just gonna play Gideon. I'd probably attack. Like the, the only thing my thing die my Snapcaster would or my Gideon would die to would be a removal spell for the token plus a lightning bolt with their Snapcaster. I think we just keep mounting pressure.
Yeah, the Squadron Hawk has been worth like three cards. My opponent has like bolted, snap bolted Squadron Hawks or something like that. And we even drew one of them. Gideon, because I put it in my deck and complain about it all the time. <laughs> yeah, so when my Gideon ultimately dies here, I can just complain about it some more. It's just all plus EV. I guess K Command and another removal spell would also do it, but then they're burning their K Command, and then like I'd have Lightning Shadow still. Yeah, make three three Night Allies. Ask your opponent what we'll play Genshadir does. Oh uh, yes, I hope they have a play Engineer. Is this TMS? TMS could plus Bolt could clear my Gideon. They have like Bolt here. If they don't have bolt, they're just going to get wrecked. Bounce the squawk. Why would you bounce the squawk and not the night ally? Oh no, we didn't draw white sources. Could just like light and shadow my opponent. Although that doesn't attack through Snapcaster. Counterspell? What, are they going to like force my 1 1? Why would they not just kill the 3 3? Yeah, Bounce of the Squawk is really weird. Should we have Council's Judgment this uh, Jace here? And, like, make another Night Ally. Sword Pulse equipped to Knight, Anime Gideon, Smash. Yeah, not, not unreasonable play. Could just, like, punch my opponent in the face for a million. I think I might be just killing this Jace, though, and making another knight. Punching my opponent. Why not just smash the Jace? We could. I'm just like, keep getting value instead, though. Uh, it doesn't really matter what I port, because my opponent has Arkham's Astrolabe. But I could cut them off of double... I can't even cut them off double anything. Whatever, I'm just pouring a land and move on with my life. Because of the coward. I mean, I'm fine with my opponent investing more resources to try to, like, kill my Gideon. Oh. See, so they could have, like, K Command here, I guess, and clear it. Even then, then we get to, like, just smash them with Light and Shadow, right? Because they'd have to attack with their Snapcaster Mage. And they K Command the Gideon and, like, make me discard. Oh, play engineer? That doesn't do it. Now you're just dead. We just cancel judgment the engineer, plus up, and kill them. Name's Knight. Nice, now you trade with my Knight ally still. <laughs> oh no, we choose the other Yeah, we're just gonna kill him. I guess so Sword and Smash also works, but it's whatever at this point. They're, they're dead. Sword and Smash, I guess, is better, because if they have a Force of Will or something, then I could cast a Squawk. They're just dead. Smash. Hey, we did it. Shed Hogak deck got punished for being low on Graver Day. Oh yeah, for sure. This deck could definitely use some, uh, some sideboard tweaks. Man, I'm not gonna lie that the, the that, like that was a um, that was definitely an outlier of a, a match, but like that matchup did not feel terrible. <laughs> we did outvalue four color pile there. All right, come on, we gotta get this trophy. I want a trophy with the squadron hawks. Is my deck list different enough from normal death and taxes that I'll get published, and like normal death and taxes also will probably not, right? Did it be 10 cards different or like 20 or 15 cards different or something? In the beginning of Magic, it was seven alliance and white knights. Eventually, it evolved into Gideon and Squadron Hog. Didn't you top of the challenge of this list? With this? Yeah, I, I also did top of the challenge, but I want to get it into the, the 5 0. I want to get a trophy with it. 
It's 20? Oh, yeah. Then I don't think we'd get published over, like, another death and taxes. We'd have to fight with all the people that 5 would with normal DMT, then. I hope this list gets published. I hope I just, like, keep doing well with Squadron Hawks and just... This list takes off and then everyone just... Has to deal with the monster I've created. <laughs> so, like I said at the beginning of the stream, we we started. I started this uh, stream two rounds already into this league because I totally forgot that I still had this league left over. So I'm going to be doing some some tweaking here, and we'll play a couple more matches after uh, after this league finishes up. Yeah, four hawk, four force, two spear keeper from the main, some murderer and stuff. <laughs> Tweet at X Jake about your pictures of squawks or ordering squawks. Yes, please. It's actually, it, it actually does feel, it does warm my heart to see everyone just like, I just bought all these squadron hawks and stuff. It's really awesome. Squawk zombie five hundred and modern a week. Few weeks ago too. Oh jeez. Squadron Hawk secretly, secretly legacy playable and modern playable. As it turns out, oh god, the final boss nerves are killing me. After I I four would I four one so much with this list. I got I gotta get get the five zero now. I give her over mother. I should I didn't make this a command at this point. So many people are asking me, but. But yeah, it, it's better against Engineer and Renin 6, but it's not fully tested. I don't know if it's better than Mother of Runes, but it's definitely, like, not a huge downgrade if it is a downgrade. So it's, like, worth testing. Oh, God. All right, final boss time. All right, I don't know who this is, but we won the die roll. All right, snap keep. No one plays combo decks. Don't worry about it. Playing Depths and Taxes recently, so obviously I know how to play this deck. I did see Depths and Taxes. I saw the list. Yeah, final boss is just elves. My opponents just fetch land or elves. Uh, it's not elves. Hope this is uh, Depths and not just land. Uh, just lands. She, she. It's a wait. Is four color well? With a nutty four color well man. This looks like four color loam. I mean, time for the time for the squad. Is squad good first loam? I, mean, I guess theoretically, we cut our palace jailer though, which does make me uh, softer. Palace jailer just like makes your loam matchup up high when you draw it. Let's do some cawing. Dredged Rascal Guard Queen, so they are just on a four color low mirror. Like a nutty Mox Diamond start. So, for this game, you paid $5 to land your best, paid $800. <laughs> Have you said Kaka, motherfucker, yet? Uh, I don't know. Other than just now, obviously. This list needs four Legion Conquistador. Didn't they print a new, another like Legion Conquistador in uh, M20? So I'm probably not supposed to play this Hallow Spirit Keeper yet. Although, what's my isn't my opponent's hand like Taiga, Verdant, and two like unknowns? I don't know if it's just attack with full. Probably not. Yeah, I think the plan is just keep playing the squawks. Go. 
Go, my children. Did you consider beating Ren 6 by playing a Dato Vanguard? <laughs> Giver beats Maze. Aw, oh, fuck! I don't think it's pro probably not worth the one damage for the activation. But maybe it is, since I don't really have anything else going on. And yeah, it's probably better to beat cards there. Wait, hang on. There's a Thespian Sage and a Canyon Slough in here. Guess I better hold on to my Karakas. I don't know what this Canyon Slough is doing, but that Thespian Sage certainly means something. Wasteland might. Nope. That's just Stage. Bits to cut squawk for for a Tonto Vanguard. All right, we're just gonna play all the squawks. Uh, maybe. We'll, eh. What even is their hand? They milled Ren and Six and Crop Rotation. Okay, so they're just Jund lands then, right? They are Jund lands. They're not four color loam. They milled a Crop Rotation. I think I need to protect my... Yeah, Wasteland gets Wastelanded, though. Although so does Caracas. They're both, like, kind of important to protect. I think I'm just supposed to double squawk here. I think I might actually want to also use the Giver for inches for more damage here. Yeah, with... Yeah, f f Jund lands with Vraska, apparently. Although I guess giving a creature pro color is the same as just attacking with everything. I think I'm going to just attack with everything. And play two more squawks, and hopefully I don't get like tabernacled. <laughs> if I do get tabernacled, it just feeds the spirit keeper, right? Don't worry about the fact that we can't beat the tabernacle with a bunch of spirits. Squawk good versus Merrill <laughs> Anyone read those numbers? I have blocked Merrill Age with Squadron Hawks. I blocked a Hogak. I tweeted about it. Blocked a Hogak with uh, three Squadron Hawks with two Anthems in play. The Air Force has been assembled. I have a screenshot of this. Wasteland my wasteland. They don't have enough mana to crop rock, like, kill me here. Although, I think they haven't played a land. Lone back, wasteland port, slew. Play wasteland, wasteland my port. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Next turn. <laughs> it's coming. Tell us the story where you defeated the Arc Life Phoenix with your squadron, squadron on your Force 1. Yeah, we're definitely just gonna cast Spirit Keeper here and then, like, force a virtue pitch to plow. Or maybe pitch the other Spirit Keeper, we'll see. Again, hopefully my opponent does not find Tabernacle. <laughs> Because I cannot beat that. But I haven't done the math. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We don't even have lethal next turn. <laughs> Please, no tabernacle. No tabernacle. If you force a response to a daily for one, please screenshot it and post it everywhere. Barbering, sure. Please barbering me, opponent. Barbering my giver. Kapow! Force of Virtue. Kapow! I'm probably supposed to pitch the Spirit Keeper. Keep the plow to clear like a Merrill Age. Kapow! Got him good. Get wrecked.
We draw like a waste on a report, we just have lethal. Wait, does Giver Runes make this lethal? No, it deals the same amount of damage. Because I'm losing two to deal four. Oh no, they can double barbering the Giver. They got me. Um, well, I'll attack them for eight. Go, my legion. Yeah, I think they're on tabernacle or bust here. No tabbies, no tabbies. No whammies, opponent. I can't beat Tabernacle. Please don't do it. Yes! <laughs> Hang on, I gotta screenshot this part. I guess I should save this first. Sideboarding time. Pithing Needle seems good. Cataclysm, Surgicals. Wow, we're gonna get punished for lack of graveyard hate. Prolet's definitely weaker. My opponent's all like Vraskas and shit. Uh, Judgment's probably fine. Yeah, I think my opponent could have, like, cycled the canyon slew to, like, mill from three more loam and try to find the tabernacle still, but I don't know. Provoker is good if Needle is. I mean, not necessarily the case because you can name lands, but I guess, like, both Frasca and Ren 6, maybe it's worth it. Let's figure out what the cuts are, I suppose. Am I supposed to cut Squadron Hawk in this matchup? Like, probably. <laughs> Water Hog better or worse than Thalia? Mm. Are we even allowed to cut the Hawk? I cut the Hawks a couple times. I played against Ruby Storm and Sneak and Show during the challenge, and I cut it in both those matchups. Yeah, Thalia is not great. I can shave the plows. Probably see, like. But then, like, aren't I supposed to cut these Squadron Hawks and, like, leave them two Thalias or something? Because, <laughs> like, you can't shave Squadron Hawks. We can, like, cut all our givers. Yeah, Light and Shadow might maybe okay. Not pro a lot of relevant protections, for sure. we got 30 seconds left. We can, like, cut givers. Givers... Yeah, givers not very good. Cut all the givers and play like one Thalia. Call it a day. We'll reassess for game three. Spirit Keeper. Spirit Keeper is actually okay. This matchup like kind of gets into a grind fest. All right, Snap Keep. We got Prelate. And we have Cataclysm. It's a good one two punch. Assuming we can hit a couple of land drops here. Oh, I guess Giver giving. Um, uh, yeah, Giver giving uh, Prelate Pro. Barbering is a nothing. Maybe Giver's better than Mom in that regard. In terms of, like, I, maybe I want to keep Giver's in. Because they don't really usually get to, like, Barbering you twice because the Prelate prevents them from loaning it back. We beat Double Mox Diamond Life from the Loam. Even, like, Double Loaming once they started, like, having Canyon Slew and shit. Get to five. All right, here it comes. Come on. 
Give me that 5-0. 5-0 with the squad. Oh, it's a fairly strong 5. Especially if they have a life from the loam to follow it up. Loam can't outgrind the hot. They might get ancest land ancestral recall, but we get ancestral recall for birds. Wasteland is nurturing feed bug seems kind of greedy. They have two cards left in hand. We but no, if we had more lands, I might do it. But we kind of need to get this bound to play and also hit land drops. Silver library, that's pretty strong. Uh, we'll play Stoneforge Mystic here rather than the cause. Library makes the squawk look worse, does it? Still, like, okay, right? Oh, this, the cat girl, not the squawk. Yeah. But they have to, like, sack the exploration, at least, and stuff like that. Cataclysm boarding plan is definitely worse against lands because we're not also boarding in rest in peace. Like, maybe it's not even worth it. I'm not sure. Yeah, worse comes to worse, we could just pitch it to the force. Although, I'm probably pitching a squawk to the force, unless I need to play it this turn. In which I might pitch the Cataclysm. Yeah, I'm not getting to form it anytime soon, especially if my opponent finds a loam. Just like wastelands me a bunch. And like Frasca broke the cave my Aether Vial. That would be bad. Okay. That's kind of bad, but more expected. Please punishing fire my Stoneforge Mystic. Please. Please, I need this. Please cast Punishing Fire targeting Stoneforge Mystic. Oh fuck. Life and Loam. That's a lot that's way better. Not another force isn't the worst here. <laughs> I think I would have forced there. Yeah, I wasn't sure. I didn't really want to because I wasn't a hundred percent locked in on pitching this cataclysm. But now that we have second force, I'm definitely locked in on pitching this cataclysm. Unfortunately, I also need to tick this vial up to three, which means our squawk's going to get locked out until we can draw another land, but we'll have one squawk at least. And just like a 4-4 four -four Sanctifrel is hard for them to beat. <laughs> Pretty high enforcing because we weren't guaranteed to draw land. That's true. If we did draw the land, then Obviously, the force does nothing because we're just going to activate it and put in the sword that turn. But yeah, it's probably a pretty low opportunity cost there. They are pretty low from the silver library. Maybe I should have been pressuring their life total more. Come on, cast a punishing fire. I don't know if that's ancestral recall, sure. It looks like we're never casting another spell in this game. Go, my Legion. Down to six cards. Go up to seven, eight, nine. But yeah, we're going to pitch a bunch of force. So. Is this deck good against the mirror? I think you're probably unfavored in the mirror. 
because you I've cut all like the friction revokers and shit. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Take this vial up to three. Get port me. I punch them for six. What is this? What's happening? Crop rotation for like glacial chasm? Or like, this can't be maze, right? It's like has to be chasm. But we have flicker west to, to beat the chasm lock, right? Well, they have stage, so it could be a little bit trickier. Oh, this is just maze, wow, all right. Yeah, tabernacle would've been scary. Now we're just gonna put Prelate on two here. I suppose we put Prelate on two in their draw step so they like dredge back this loan for no value. Probably. No flicker wisp. What about flicker wisp? Leave up flick. No. I want them to dredge back this loan. You can flicker the maze and kill the next turn. I mean, we can do that with untapping, too. We just flicker it before combat. Leaving the flicker does get around, like, getting tabernacled here. They didn't even... I'm a little bit scared of a tabernacle, honestly. They didn't even dredge back the loam here. Did they have a second loam? I don't even know. Am I dead to anything besides natural tabernacle? Am I supposed to just prel it on two? Prel it on two just stops loam, and like loam doesn't beat me here. Maybe I do just play around. Natural tabernacle. Well, I guess we can't play around it here because I have to do something on instep, right? They like crop rotate for it. Because we could file and prelate on one on instep. Just to lock out crop rotation for glacial chasm or something as an option. There are two cards in hand. Locks out crop rotation. We untap. Flicker with this maze of Ith. Kill them. We did it! Kaka! <laughs> oh man, what a what a delight. What a delight. Uh screenshot this bad boy. Uh, what a what a treat this has been. All right, saved. And I'll get so much dopamine for five hour leagues, and now I can acquire dopamine vicariously. Let's count fifteen unique cards. I don't think yeah, I don't think we're unique enough to be to. I think we have to brawl with the other DNTs. Did anyone catch you, Kai? I did. I said Kaka on stream as we won. 
Oh, that was, that was great. We didn't, I guess, I mean, you guys didn't see the first two matchups. Well, I have to go back and think about what the first two matchups were, because I like to post what the matchups were. I'll have to, like, go through my logs and find them, though. But anyway, uh, we can play some more. We're, it's only 10 o'clock, so we can, like, queue into another league and, like, play another two matches or something. But I think I wanted to fuck with some uh, different iterations of this list. I think there are... It's, this is definitely not a fully fleshed out list. <laughs> I feel like I'm witnessing history. I need, to, I, need to, I need to, like, record all these matches, too. I haven't done any of this shit. You do on the car and don't. Shoutouts to my dad in chat. Who fan right there? My dad in chat. Who has decided to, I guess, tune into my stream, even though he has no idea what's going on. No, we didn't already fit it. We started, like, I already was two matches into a league. Uh, I totally forgot about it. So we only played three matches today. So I wanted to make some deck list edits. And then, uh, queue into another one. I kind of wanted to play some path to exiles on the sideboard. What sucks in this sideboard? Maybe, like, cut, like, a Gideon. And, like, I don't know, the Revoker? I play short of Truth and Justice to the Light and Shadow. Would I board in Truth and Justice against True Name decks? Probably not, except for maybe Blue Red. What matchups would I board in Truth and Justice for that I'm not already boarding in Light and Shadow for? You wrap up earlier than usual. You have a dog. We only played three matches. We'll play at least one more. Maybe we'll just do like a one man. We'll do we'll do a two man queue. We won't start up another league. We'll do one more match. We're gonna play. Is Armageddon better than Cat on this list, or is the Walk Wipe too important? That's a good question. The problem with Armageddon, though, is that Armageddon is horrendously bad against Ren and Six for obvious reasons. But like, that's definitely not unreasonable in a list like this. If they don't have a Ren and Six out, like, you can cast some pretty proactive Armageddons. That's not crazy for sure. It's definitely worth trying out. I'll have to add it. I have so many ideas that I want to try, and like not nearly enough time in the day to try them all. So we're gonna play some paths. We're gonna play like we're trying to fit in Tomek. Yes, I want to fit in a Tomek. I want to try Blade Splicer. There's so many, so much shit I want to do. All right, we're gonna cut a Gideon, play a path, and like cut uh, Revoker. Play another path. I think my Delver matchup is like weirdly weak. I want to play a Tomic. I want to play some number of Blade Splicers. I want to try Nonsense. We're just trying Nonsense. What do we... Alright, what, what would I cut from this list? Am I just, like, cutting all the Flicker Wisps? Flicker Wisps plus Blade Splicers is a combo, though. I don't even know what I would want to do here. Just keep shaving these Mother of Runes until I don't have any more. Could maybe actually, like, cut the Recruiter Package? Cut like recruiter, recruiter, prelate, for, like blade splicer and tomic or something. What, is, what does that look like? Definitely helps the Delver matchup cutting like clunky recruiters and stuff. Oh god, no one tell Gento. <laughs> blade splicer legacy cutting the recruiter package makes your sideboard look like more. Yeah, oh yeah, I did add a bunch of creatures to the sideboard like specifically for the uh, the recruiter package. So, like maybe that maybe that plan's just bad. Like, if I'm not playing Recruiters, I'm probably just like playing a Disenchant, not a Relic Warder. Stuff like that. I'd probably, like, cut a Spirit Keeper, right? Spirit Keeper plus Blade Splicer is kind of the same slot. Let's go down to one Wisp. Battle Screech. <laughs> Feels like a totally different deck if I'm registering, like, battering, Battle eh, battle Screech and Lingering Souls and stuff. Huh. What do I want to do? Maybe we'll play like one. Maybe we'll try one Blade Splicer, one Tomic, and like. We're not playing Legion Conquistador. I'm not playing Legion Conquistador in this deck. Or the human version, whatever it's called. Can I go to land? Probably not. But maybe. What if we did this? 
this. Does this look, does this look acceptable? That's why you run a catcher's mod. <laughs> that, 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 this is a whole different meme that I also wanted to try, which was just squadron stompy. Not playing Battle Screech. Stop. <laughs> you guys are bad. Twitch chat is terrible as additions. I should never I should never deck build with Twitch chat. All right, we're gonna try. We're just gonna play this in a two-man queue before I go to bed. Fuck off, everybody. Never deck build when, with Twitch chat. Someone play against me in the two-man queue. Someone fight me. You guys out there in Twitch chat. This deck needs more Tithe Taker, or it needs uh, less Tithe Taker. <laughs> if I could play less Tithe Takers than I currently am, I would. <laughs> someone's queuing with, someone just queuing with elves. We're waiting. I'll wait all day. I won't wait all day, I'll wait. Where's my... Take a look at my list some more while we're doing that. Goblins play yourself free. I did... I beat... I played Goblins once, and I played Elves once, and I've beaten them both with this list. So obviously, those matchups are both buys. I need to update my uh, deck list, though. I have not updated this, like, at all. <laughs> Why is this off? Wow, these two main cues take fucking forever. Let's go to the practice queue. Let's see the very first. Did we 5 0? We did 5 0, Eddie. <laughs> we 5 0'd after top eighting with fucking Squadron Hawk Death and Taxes. Gotta update this list. Oh shit, did we get someone? We got someone. Spicy one of Pentelhaven. <laughs> Alright, snap off. None of our sweet cards, but... Alright, it's called a darn. Means this matchup can be horrible. Probably. Oh. Blue Red Delver again? This hand's very strong against Blue Red Delver. Especially if you just drew more plows, too. Aggressive. We'll just uh, wasteland plow a second eight mile. Two stone for to mistake the card is banned in modern. You're correct. It's too good. And I'll play this other planes. Kapow. Them the business. Let's draw Blade Slicer or Tomic. Tomic plus Force. I really like the to the idea of Tomic plus Force just being a 3 4 flyer against like Delver and shit. Oh, which are one of Flicker was. What's my opponent have? Just a bunch of removal spells? Opponent didn't have Daze or they didn't want Daze the second vial at least. Well, I mean, Daze wouldn't even work. They could like force my Mystic. I don't even think I want to play a Mystic here, honestly. We can just Vile one Mystic, Vile on the other Mystic. Just, like, never cast a spell. And if I, like, if I just get bolted, then just not 
taxing their mana at all, right? Because they need to untap. Yeah, they certainly have a bunch of removal in their hand, at least. Send this uh, Stoneforge Mystic to its death. Holy, what? I'm untapping? Doesn't seem right. Seems like you're winning a lot of tournaments these days. How much have your skills grown in the last 12 months? It's hard to, it's hard to tell how much your own skills grow, you know? Like I've been play, I've been streaming for like the last like what fifteen months. I started streaming like March twenty eighteen or something like that. It's so, like probably a little more than fifteen months. It's hard to gauge how much growth you have, Magic player. But I guess based on my results, I've been doing uh, better. Uh, hot. Uh, I guess I'll just pass here. I don't really see a way that we lose this game. I'm going to like secretly just on like Mono Blue Delver. If they're on Mono Blue Delver, they're just like super duper dead. Oh no, they're on Blue Red Delver, okay. That's fine. Would I even Flicker Wisp to save the Stoneforge Mystic? Probably not. Well, I have to put it in. So you bolt off to. Oh, I didn't even pay attention. That is lightning bolt, isn't it? It's literally not paying any attention at all. <laughs> Putting in Flicker Wisp here. Too bad they don't play Shock. Get him with his Force of Virtue. If they do have Bolt here, it does get a little bit of. Wait, hang on. I'm supposed to flicker out this Volcanic Island. What the fuck am I doing? I'm just gonna flicker out this Volcanic Island to connect with the sword. Like, not a fool. Let they cast a bolt here, in which case we just get him. So just like tanking whether or not they want to cast lightning bolt here, I guess? Into my vial on three? Maybe they stepped away from their computer? I don't know. I'm gonna keep updating the spreadsheet. What do we play against? Today, Blue Red Delver. Um, and then Grixis. No, it was four color control. The old check pile deck. Jund lands, right? I don't think Jund lands is on there, is it? Bug lands is on there. My opponent just leave. Opponent come back. Oh, Jund lands is on here. Wow. All right, they're back. So yeah, we're just supposed to flicker out at this volcanic island. Are there any white cards we can cast from exile? Oh, we're. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think you can cast anything from Exile besides Griffin, Squee, and Eternal Scourge. So yeah, we're just going to flicker with their Volcanic Island. They'll bolt one of my things, but then we'll get Sword Connection and just kill them. So 
accept this outcome. Oh, we drew the splicer. Oh no, opponent, come back! I didn't blade splicer you with a force of virtue! 6-6 six, six worth of power! Alright, well now we have a bunch of path to exiles to go along with our council's judgment and sanctum prelates. So suddenly this matchup gets a lot better. <laughs> Although the I don't think the blue-red delver matchup was too much of a concern prior to this. Why hedge to stone forge with the wisp? Uh, I don't know. I wanted to attack with both. I didn't want to attack with my stone for I guess I probably could have just sent everything, in which case I wanted to put it on the wisp, but I also don't think it mattered. I think they were just completely dead there. So we'll cut recruiters here. I want all of these guys. Yeah, guarantees more damage to the face. I don't know if I wanted to trade with trade a stone. I probably could have afforded to trade stone for I, all roads lead to Rome. We could have, like swapped a uh, just attack with everything, and if they block, then we just shoot their face with the the sword. But I don't know. My opponent also just didn't cast the bolt there. I think they were just saw the writing on the wall. They didn't see the hawks yet, or the forces. They still think, yeah, we did look like normal death and taxes there. That's that's true. The hell am I cutting? This blue red delver. It's like spear keepers. Just go to like no threes. Just always leave my vial on two. Cut this flicker wisp. Call it a day. Flicker wisp really better than every other card. I'm gonna cut like one force. Snap keep. We'll just draw the land. It's not a snap keep. Don't do it. This is a begrudging keep. I'll ship the Caracas. And eh, maybe the Wasteland. Not great because Blue Red Delver in our hands pretty mana intensive anyway. Ship the Wasteland. Time to top deck Aether Vial or Giver of Runes like a professional magic player. I'll take it. That's a good draw. What'd they do with that recruiter Dane? Bottom, bottom. Oh no, my wasteland. Okay, not Arcanist. That's good. Couldn't actually beat Arcanist. Hey, thanks, Cafe Grut. Bottom, bottom again. No, fuck! We drew Squire! Why, deck? Brainstorm. So what's the reason for playing Hawks? Uh, initially, the decision was to try to out to, to grind better against the uh, check pile decks and also to su to support Force of Virtue to also outgrind the the check pile decks. Uh, this sucks. I'm getting ranched here. Can't even judge with this Pyromancer. If four cards in hand, they have a brainstorm too. Ugh. Am I better off now? If I play GT, we're just and we just like die any removal anyway. We can, like play Stoneforge, find nothing. Hope they like clear the Thalia, and then we can like play equip the the GT or something. Not gonna attack here. Uh, I don't want to shuffle because there's a wasteland on the bottom like to not draw. I guess because I played the Crocus, they're incentivized to kill the Stoneforge Mystic, if anything. <laughs> Which means I'm just like 100% not getting this G-Chain to play next turn, but we could at least like, cast Council Judgment if we wanted to. Maybe my opponent just doesn't have anything. Let's get our sword into play this turn. 
my opponent still has Brainstorm in hand, too. Now I would weirdly like to draw Wasteland. I feel like we could still... Fuck! Can we stop drawing Squires? So what happens when you play two equipment, keep a hand with one, and then draw the other, I guess. So at least Stoneforge Mystic pitches the force, right? See, now they can double spell, which is bad. Means I'm a lot more scared of lightning bolts. Eh, well, that's not a lightning bolt. does put us on a very quick clock against an opponent who has cast zero lightning bolts. So we want to equip the Thalia attack here, kill the Delver, and get this GTA down. Rather than clearing the true name, I think. Clearing the true name versus clearing the Delver is the same amount of damage. Deals my opponent more damage and draws me a card. So depending on how this next turn goes, we have the option to either equip the GTA and keep going to town or like cast judgment on the true name. But we should probably be casting Brainstorm instead of like playing their fifth land, but Or at least cast their brainstorm first reason to have the flow train to play right now, right? It's a quick brainstorm. It's kind of scary. I think I will block the pyro with the attack. Which they don't. So it looks like their plan is just GTA them. Because if, even if they have like a braid for the sword, we still get a GTA connection. Which also gains us life, which is very important here in this high intensity damage race. Use the shock to kill a pyromancer because we want as many counters as we can just to gain life to not die to a bunch of bolts. What the? What's this? Gonna cast a spell to trigger the Pyromancer to get more counters first. Or to get more elementals first. Stifle the GT trigger. Oof, that could be bad. Um. Is that better than casting the Stoneforge Mystic? No, right? If I cast Stoneforge Mystic, my opponent has two cards in hand. They don't have this Brainstorm anymore. So if I cast Stoneforge Mystic, I can block, block Elementals, take four, and I'm not dead to a single bolt. If I save the Plow to Plow my own Thalia, like, I'm, st I'm still dying to a single bolt and I have to waste this Plow now? I think I'm supposed to cast the Stoneforge stick. And I hope my opponent just doesn't have bolt bolt. Cast more squires. Oh, please don't bolt bolt me. 
Can't beat it. Equipping GD to Stoneforge is better than casting a second Stoneforge. No, because I'm still dead to Bolt there. That's certainly scary. Not dead yet. We can Judgment one of these. Punch. Get GD counters. Wait, are they? They're not dead, right? Uh, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ah, oh, we're one off. Fuck. I can just like judgment the true name, path the power answer, and then we're one off lethal. I mean, that might still be the play. So I might clear this elemental out and just gain life. This part. I mean, we, we have a bunch of removal anyway. We might as well just path the Pyromancer and just kill them. They have one card in hand. Died a double bolt anyway. We can't really beat it. Oh, we could have yeah, we could have kept the sword up to gain life in case of like double bolt. That's, that is actually true. Can be double bolt with this. No, we can't, right? Oh yeah, no, I mean if I with the plow play I could have. I'll kill the elemental here. Put them to three. Yeah, the the holding up plow play was definitely better. But it just died up double bolt. I think of if there's a reason to gain life now. If we go to one, we just like we just don't do that dance. So we just never activate the GT. Yeah, it doesn't matter. They have double bolted. They don't. Hopefully, they don't and punish me for being bad. Okay, cool. We did it. All right, we bully blue red Delver again. Although we never cast any of our very minor altercations, but alterations to the deck. But we bullied the crap out of uh, blue red Delver, so I'll take it. Where's Blue Red Delver on this list? Am I blind? Oh, there it is. Six of who too strong. Dude, this deck is sweet. Uh, so I'm curious. There, there are a bunch of things I, like, I still just want to test out with this deck, right? Like Armageddon actually sounded cool. Like Blade Splicer is a cool, interesting idea. Tomic. There, there are a lot of... I think this deck list is definitely not as refined as it could be. I think some of your matchups are a little bit weaker with the addition of these cards, but I think there there might actually be something here. Like, I'm doing well with it. Like, I mean, I was doing well with normal Dozen Tags too, but I don't know. Squadron Rock is, like, Squadron Rock and Force of Virtue are both deceptively strong in this shell, and I was very surprised at how, how powerful they were, especially in tandem. Whew. But yeah, as of right now, I've played 35 matches with this deck, and we are 28-7. and seven. We're at an 80% win rate. That's what? Five leagues, eight rounds, and two one... and two one-mans, I think? Yeah, that sounds about right. Go all on and play Honor of the Pier. My ver version 1.0 did have two Honor of the Pier in the sideboard, but I... Decided that they weren't coming in in nearly enough matchups. Just wait till every <laughs> killer has two mana recall. I feel like Zero Revoker. Uh, so the list I just five. Uh, I guess you were here for the five hole list. <clears throat> we're playing one on the sideboard, but 
Honestly, like, the reason, one of the reasons I decided to meme with Squadron Rock in the first place is because I wanted more two drops and just didn't like Sprite Star Worker at all in the current meta. So, like, Squadron Rock got memed on, but then I was like, hmm, maybe if, what if, what if we actually did this? So obviously your combo matchup suffer because uh, Fred's Revoker was one of your only cards that actually had important text in a lot of the combo matchups. But I've tried to supplement that with like a combo heavy sideboard plan with like Containment Priest, two Cannonist, playing two Prelate in the 75, uh, that sort of thing. Does Fred's Revoker... I mean, it does stop Ren and Six, but it's so bad against all the Ren and Six decks. Like, it's, it's, it's a really awkward, like, tension where it's like, oh yeah, it turns out Brandon 6, but it's a 2-mana two 2-1 two versus just all of the, like, million Lightning Bolt, Fatal Push, Kolgon's Command decks. It just, like, hasn't impressed me nearly as much it has, as it has in the past. D uh, Revoker's never been good against Delver to begin with, and Delver is one of the, the top dogs right now. You can name exactly Brandon 6, but it, other than that, it's a 2-mana two 2-1. Two it's an artifact, it's just like a liability. I have not been super jazzed about Furrix or Revoker. But like, <clears throat> Revoker is big in a lot of your like random matchups that people will always be playing in Legacy, right? Like, you're happy to have Revokers in your deck versus like Storm or Sneak and Show or Stone Blade and stuff like that. But, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't do much versus Ryan 6 because the Ryan 6 decks are all just infinite removal decks and then you, they kill your Revoker and move on with their life. That's why I was, like, okay with Tomic in the flex slot, because at least the body was, like, more respectable as an anti Ren and 6 card. But anyway, I, I don't know. This deck is sweet. I, I really like it. I might fuck around with, like, more Force of Virtue Squadron Hawk type decks. There was another meme that got tossed around that I think is probably a lot worse than this deck. But, um... It was Squadron Stompy, where we just, like, play Ancient Tombs and Chrome Moxes and a bunch of, like, Squadron Hawk... Um, whatever the vampire guy is and whatever the human three drop is and you play like Chromox Ancient Tomb, Chalice of the Void Oketra's Monument, that sort of shit but it sounds really bad <laughs> but also uh, I don't know definitely looking to do some memeing yeah, tomic has been like Dece plus, I guess especially with uh, with Loam decks being big too Tomic's, Tomic's pretty powerful against obviously against Loam and stuff yeah, Legion Conquistador, and then there's one, a new one in, like, M20. That's Legion Conquistador type of human. Battalion, something? I don't know. But, but yeah, that's that's maybe a list for a, another day. Let's brew human virtue. Can you play enough white cards for Force of Virtue? Probably. I mean, you can probably have to, yeah, you have to play, like, like... The reason that you can support Force of Virtue in this deck is Squadron Hawk, honestly. You can't you can't really afford to play like Force of Will or like Bad Force of Will in your in your deck with like no inherent card advantage. So I think being able to pitch Squadron Hawk to Force of Virtue is like really huge. Palace Jailer. This deck might need a Palace Jailer, I don't know. I haven't been playing one, but like maybe maybe I need one. Maybe I should be playing one with my recruiters and stuff. But, like, you don't need to grind as much. Like, if you're casting a recruiter against, like, Grix's control, you just want, like, a Spirit Keeper or a Squadron Hawk, right? It's so much less of a liability if you just, like, you, you gain, what is it, the Vraska Emblem if your opponent hits you with a creature, you die. Like, that's what happens when you play Palace Jailer, except it's also you draw a card every turn. Yeah, one Jailer is fairly low cost, but, like, there are a lot of, like, weird, uh, weird ways this deck is moving. What is this nonsense? What am I looking at? Oh wow, we're playing Force of Virtue and Humans. <laughs> the one big thing about um, humans playing Force of Virtue versus Southern Texas is that you like basically can't cast, you can't hard cast your Force in humans, which is, I've definitely hard cast a fair number of Force of Virtues in the late game. How does, uh, does it feel like a, a unit similar to how DNT is a deck? What do you, what do you mean? Did my mana base to support it more yeah i mean we're playing like i guess we're like oh we're playing a mana cop i didn't see that so at least you have like seven things that can cast it priest white mana 
Oh, and no wire arc. Yeah, I did, I, yeah. All right, that, that's more. That's more respectful. All right. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't think about that. Is Chalice plus Tomb not wanted in this list? I think there's a different iteration that might play Chalice plus Tomb. That I also want to be trying. I, I mentioned it uh, just a second ago. Might just like, you can cut all these cards, play Tomb, Chalice, Chromox, and like more Squadron Hawk effects and stuff. <clears throat> there, obviously, this is like. Some at some point there was like a one of tomb. I, I don't think I actually ever registered one of tomb in the squadron hawk variant, but like maybe one of tomb is good because you can hard cast your force better and stuff. Still strong with equipment. We're not playing chalice on the board. We don't have any revokers to like cast on turn one. But we do have like you could like turn three two squadron hawks or something. If you play tomb and chalice, why not play red prison? I mean, there are a lot of other tomb chalice decks, right? Bomberman, Eldrazi. Steel Stompy, Soldier Stompy. I mean, Soldier Stompy's not very good, but, like, we're also playing a not very good deck, right? Sorry about the sideboard Chalice deck that somebody DMTs a turn in recent months. Yeah. I don't know if this deck wants the sideboard Chalice. Maybe because your Miracles matchup isn't great. But your Miracles matchup is, like, weirdly decent because Squadron Hawk is so good against Terminus. But yeah, I'm gonna we're gonna we're gonna sign off here. As as much fun as I did have. Who's still streaming Legacy? Oh yeah, Card Kingdom always streams on Monday. We'll go host Card Kingdom. Playing oh humans humans is on stream Eddie. Humans on stream over at Card Kingdom. Humans versus Ren and Grix. I, I actually kind of like that name. <laughs> Which I just used to assume is four color control. But anyway. Uh, thanks everybody for watching today. Hope you had a good time. As always, if you want to support my content, what I do, you can always follow, subscribe, or donate. We just hit our 750 follower point. So if you get your follow in before um, the giveaway stream, then you'll be entered in the running for that. We're giving away two foil rest in pieces. I believe the giveaway is going to be happening on Friday, but look to Twitter. I'll post it on Twitter. I'll post it in the Discord and stuff for, like, uh, the official date and time that that stream is going to be happening. But um, that's that. Thank you all so much for the support. We will be sending those off. Uh, other than that, I hope you enjoyed Squaw Squawks and Taxes, my crazy brainchild, which is secretly, I guess, maybe actually reasonable. <laughs> Go forth and buy your... Please send me all the pictures of you ordering or purchasing Squadron Hawks. I, it really warms my heart, honestly. I got a bunch of pictures today. It was really funny. And I don't know. This deck is sweet. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm onto something here. But anyway, I'll see you guys all on Wednesday. Wednesday, we will not be memeing with Squadron Hawks and taxes because I have a donation deck list to play. I'll be playing Blue Red Delver. But after that, we'll go back to uh, some more Squadron Hawk shit. Squadron Hawk shenanigans. Anyway, see you guys all then. Also, Sidro, thanks for the follow. Anyway, later. Oh, crap. I forgot to slash host.